Are drunk drivers in Virginia Beach getting off the hook easy? The Commonwealth's attorney says certain judges hand out little to no punishment for DUI convictions. And he worries it's causing a cycle of repeat offenders on the city's roadways. And he's not the only one noticing this trend. Tonight, Ten in Your Size and McNamara investigates. And Tom, every year Virginia Beach charges more people with DUI than anywhere else in the state. Last year, 20% of those were repeat offenders. The Commonwealth's attorney says the laws are tough enough, but some of the judges are not. I woke up at 3.45 that morning. And I looked out on the driveway to see if her car was there, and it wasn't. So I'm like, oh dear, because she always would let us know she wasn't going to come home. Kay Walsh is first and foremost a mother. You know right away? Mm -hmm. I went to my niece. But she's better known in Hampton Roads as a mother against drunk driving. Her only child, Robin, killed at age 34. The night she was killed was her offender's third DUI. Walsh made it her personal mission to get justice. A judge sentenced Robin's killer to eight years in prison. I was jubilant, and we were told that no one in Virginia Beach was ever given such a step sentence. Other people are going to be killed, and that's the tragedy. Virginia Beach Commonwealth's attorney Harvey Bryant agrees the case is not typical. The state has mandatory minimum and maximum requirements for sentencing. For the first DUI, the minimum is five days. On a second offense, it's 20. A third is a felony. The minimum sentence jumps to six months. But judges can suspend some, if not all, of that time. And court records show they do. Brian says it happens the most in circuit court, where drunk drivers appeal a lower court's decision. There are certain judges who are known to be a little more sympathetic. He says defense attorneys continue cases until they get the judges they want. We say, oh, I don't know how well this is going to go today, and the defense attorneys are saying, okay, I'm ready to try the case today. Sympathetic judges, that's what inmate Kelly Evans says she had. I received a, my first year in 2000, my second one was in 2002, and my third was in 2003. Three DUIs and not one day behind bars. Only on her fourth conviction did Evans receive jail time. One year and four months to think about what she did. I feel as if I received a good significant amount of time for my first or second. I may not be in this position today. Look at how many charges, you know, from 2007 to that, and then she gives, gives her a break. And Walsh sees the same thing in data from Mad's court monitoring program. Reckless driving. And she has help. Guilty, no fine. Police officers anonymously bring her attention to cases like this. Both cases. The defendants were given a break when they had very high BAC. Both depositions were deferred for six months. If no new violations occurred, the DUI charges would be reduced to reckless driving. The same thing happened in this case. The driver had a blood alcohol level of .27, more than three times the legal limit. But the judge took the case under advisement. If the driver kept a clean record for one year, the charge would be reduced. That gave the green light to this guy to go ahead and do it again. Walsh has reported judges to the Judicial Inquiry Review Commission. She was told rulings are left to the judge's discretion unless ethics are violated. Ten on your side wanted to see if court paperwork backs up her claims. We searched a sample size of 42 concluded DUI cases. Of those, 32 were charged as first-time offenders. Of the 32, eight received jail time. The rest only had to pay a fine. The vast majority owed $250. The second-time offenders who went to jail served sentences ranging from 20 days to three months, when the maximum is a year. For one reason or another, one of those repeat offenders had the case dropped altogether. Ten on your side also requested an interview with each circuit court judge asking if they see the trend. We received this response from a paralegal. Quote, I've been asked to inform you this court's policy is that the judges do not give interviews. As for Walsh, she hopes her story will inspire others to report questionable rulings. After all, she is only one person, one set of eyes. She wonders if anyone else is watching. I do this to try to keep another family from going through what Bob and I have been through, and we need some assistance from those judges. You may notice we didn't name the judges Walsh and Brian say they suspect. That's because comparing judges side by side on paper proves to be very difficult. The court's electronic database is not designed to search by judge or by charge. I'm Ann McNamara, Town Your Side.
And the Commonwealth's attorney does not expect judges to give the maximum sentence. He says the jail is not equipped to hold 2,500 extra prisoners every year. New at 530, we'll tell you about a new law that will stop drunk drivers before they get behind the wheel.